Hello, everybody. I'm Sharkat87, um, and we're, yeah, we're going to be playing some Dead Space 2023. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the run, and then we can you know, do all our introductions and everything. So uh, time is going to begin when we gain control of our character. So I'm going to load this autosave. And time is going to begin in about three, two, one, go. Good luck. All right. Thank you. All right. So yeah, I'm Sharkat. I run a lot of horror games, especially uh, the Dead Space series. And would you all like to introduce yourselves? I'm Nervy Destroyer. Um, I also run this game, usually known for Halo, but I kind of fell in love with this speed run. I love all the tricks and crazy stuff that you're about to see. Uh, yeah, my name is Meta. Uh, I'm actually primarily an FPS speedrunner, but Sharkhead was the one that got me uh, more into horror games. Uh, I'm actually more into Dead Space 2 right now, but the Dead Space remake it run is phenomenal, and I'm so excited that we get to show it off to you guys. And I'm Patrick Quinn, and I was a developer on this game. Um, I was a quality designer for Dead Space remake. Yep. Um, and I fell in love running the uh, game on Impossible during the end of the development cycle and continued playing it afterwards. All right, so we're immediately going to see our first piece of movement tech. Uh, this is called Toggle Aim Sprinting. And basically the way it works is the game doesn't... Uh, well, so first of all, basically we're adding our aim speed onto our regular uh, sprint speed. It combines both together. So you run about, I think it's 16% faster. Um, it has to do with some of the in-game settings. If you have uh, tap to aim on, but hold to sprint, then uh, the game doesn't slow you down while you're aiming, and you're just able to stack the speed. Um, and it's really nice because we can you know, move at full speed while uh, you know, shooting, grabbing things, etc. Uh, but right now, we got to wait on a little bit of a cutscene. So um, I could actually throw it to you if you want to talk a little bit about how the cutscenes in this game work. Yeah. So we've got about four different types of cutscenes in the game. Um, we have our audio rig calls, our video rig calls. We have what we call here a walk and talk where uh, you have full control of Isaac while there are NPCs present in the area. And then we have what we call an NIS, which is a non-interactive scene where there's no control of Isaac. We'll see pretty shortly that audio calls and video calls can be skipped. All right. Yeah, so uh, with this one, you, you can skip the, the rig video, but you got to wait for uh, the characters to finish their animations um, and everything um, to get out of this room. So. We got to just chill for a minute here, but um, I guess we could also talk a little bit about the uh, the quest, you know, objective system a little bit because it's kind of affects how we progress through the game. If you want to talk about that a little bit too, sure. Yeah, like as uh, you'll see here, your objective is going to update pretty frequently throughout the run. Um, one of the first things everybody tried was to just go straight to the end of the game and hit the final boss, hit the credits right away. But luckily, we built the game pretty decently, <laughs> and you have to hit pretty much every single objective, and we're just going to be going from basically point A to point B as quickly as possible to hit those objectives. Yeah, and there's a couple exceptions here and there, but you know we'll get to that much later in the run. But essentially, if there's any kind of shortcut we can take from one objective to the other, we're going to do that. Chapter one isn't uh, too crazy. We are mostly just, um, you know, getting all our uh, some of our upgrades and things. And you know, we have a gun. We just picked up the stasis module. So, like you just saw there, we're going to be using that to slow things down. Um, you know, for some puzzles, it's it's good for combat too. But the the whole objective of this chapter is to repair the tram. So this is the first half of that that we're going to do here. We're just going to be, you know. Uh, Getting that started, some enemies are going to show up, do a little bit of combat. And in that hallway, that was our first example of a terror event. That one was scripted, um, but we're going to see a lot of different variety of events that can happen. Sometimes it can spawn enemies. Sometimes it can make a door open really fast, which is nice. Sometimes it'll make it open really slow, which is not as nice. <laughs> yeah, the, the funniest of the random events is... Uh, <laughs> When you're taking the tram from one level to the other, it can just crash um, and lose you upwards of 20 plus uh, not, seconds. Not the game, the tram. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yes. The tram. The tram will stop. Um, can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be something. Yeah. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, obviously, it's not a huge deal. Um, it's just kind of. I mean, for if you're trying to go for you know a world record or something, it's kind of annoying. But you know, in this case, I think it'd just be kind of funny. It happened in practice once, so you know, you never know. Yeah, unfortunately, the intensity director is completely out of your control. It is 
inherently just completely random and will spawn random events depending on whatever it decides to do in what room you're in. All right, we're just waiting on one more uh, slasher to show up. That's our basic enemy in the game. Uh, just to talk a little bit about the combat, um, in case you haven't played any of these games before, it all revolves around dismemberment, so you do way more damage taking off the limbs of enemies. So a lot of times with slashers, you want to take off uh, both arms because that kills them. And coming up is our first rig skip. So if you open up a audio or text log when um, certain events happen, like, say, a rig call, you can actually cancel out the rig call and completely skip it. And the objectives go, OK, then you complete the rig call. In that case, that door would remain locked the entire time until the rig call completes. But by canceling it, it just opens up right away. Yeah, we intentionally wanted you to watch all of the uh, story beats in the game. <laughs> so we had the controls for those videos um, hidden on the actual story beats. But opening up the database has those controls present. The actual story UI appears, and those controls are still there and still available. Yeah, and I mean, across um, the whole run, how much time save are we looking at from these rig video skips? I don't, I don't know if anyone's ever done the math, but it's, it's got to be at least 20 minutes, is my guess. Oh, we got past that guy there. That's nice. really good. Uh, really, really quick, uh, this will come up again later, but uh, your hitbox actually uh, gets bigger when you aim. And so right there, we want to unaim. Well, we want to we be aiming because, you know, we can move faster while we're doing that, but then we want to unaim uh, so we can squeeze by that guy. If I remember correctly, you said our hitbox is a... It's a pill. So, it's a pill, oh, yeah. A <laughs> it's a Dr. Mario pill, yeah. Red or blue, who <laughs> knows, but... <laughs> and just to give a quick story beat, um, we arrived here on the Ishimura trying to find out really what's going on because Isaac's girlfriend, Nicole, was on board, and very obviously things are not going quite right. So the enemies here can be a little bit random. Uh, where they show up. So we're going to hopefully get some good patterns here. If they group up by the canisters, we can blow them up. Hopefully that got a couple of them. We're also trying to get uh, a decent amount of ammo as well. Um, we don't really need any money drops. Uh, the, in fact, we're only going to make one store visit, and it's just to buy more ammo because we need more. Uh, <laughs> we are playing on uh, story difficulty, uh, which is the easiest difficulty. So. You know, we don't have to do anything too, too crazy in terms of uh, item management, but I mean, if you just keep blasting the whole game and don't, you know, pay attention to how much ammo you have, you will still run out, um, especially because we're not really stopping to grab a lot of uh, loot along the way. So we just have to keep that in mind a little bit, make sure we have enough ammo uh, for the guns that we're picking up. You're probably noticing Shark Hat run past a lot of enemies. Um, we can do that because of that increased movement speed that we're getting from uh, the toggle in. Yeah, and, and that guy in particular, actually, um, we dealt enough damage to him that as soon as he got out of his spawning animation, he died instantly. Uh, the game will actually prevent enemies from dying until they, they finish that animation, um, just because of, you know, uh, potential bugs and things oh, like that. But, very many b bugs. <laughs> <laughs> but if you pump in enough damage, uh, they'll just die instantly as soon as um, they get through that. So by the time you even get up to that enemy, he's already dead. Yeah, we actually allow you to do damage to them, but we stop it from going below one HP so that they don't die during their animation with the loot getting stuck in vents. Um, they Animations go over all over the place with ragdolls. It's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, we have successfully repaired the tram, and now we're heading back up to the start. And I guess that actually reminds me, we should mention, uh, we're heading back up to the Kellyan, which we haven't actually seen yet. And um, that's because, uh, as a community, we decided to skip the intro for this game. Uh, it saves about 10 minutes, I think. Uh, there's about a five-minute cutscene and then another five minutes of waiting around in this uh, lounge here. And, you know, there's a little bit of gameplay, you know, kind of walking around. Um, but it's not anything too crazy, and the opening chapter is fairly using, long anyway. We're using gameplay very loosely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. So that that's why. Um, and so what we do is we have uh, a bunch of community-made autosaves, and we can just load one right as the action starts, um, which is really nice. So we would have seen this uh, if we were starting a, a new game, but um, you know, normally. But yeah, here we are. Time for the most important character in the game. Yeah. So, uh, well, one, one, one quick thing. They... Uh, 
I think uh, they did a really good job of fleshing out a lot of the characters that didn't uh, get a lot of screen time or even any lines at all um, in the original game, and this is a cool uh, example of that. But uh, we have to wait around for just a moment here, so uh, this would be a great time to read a couple donations. Hi, Sharkat. I have some really good donations for you. I have one. It's $20 from Animated Elf, and it says, okay, but is the shark hat actually a hat, or is the shark hat wearing shark hat pants? <laughs> That's a good question. Thank you for <laughs> That's that. That's true. Thank you. We also have $25 from Kona Rican that says, Dead Space 3 was the first horror game I ever played with my mom and something we still have fond memories of. She's excited to watch the run of the remake and I'd like to ask for a small favor, could we get everyone to say hi to any moms who might be watching? Absolutely, yeah. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> Thank you for supporting. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have time for one more? Yeah, go for it. We have $25 from Wolf Fang that says, love you GDQ, less than three. Aww. All right, great. Thank you. So I actually left that slasher uh, alive because, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was pointed out to me that uh, I didn't even realize this, but um, slashers are not supposed to be in zero-G areas, and we haven't gotten to one of those yet, but you'll, you'll see when we get there. Um, only certain enemy types are supposed to appear there, um, but if you don't kill him when you go back there, it is in zero-G, and he just runs around like normal <laughs> and normal gravity, which is pretty funny. So now we're making our way to medical where we want to get the captain's rig because basically we want to get to the bridge and figure out what happened, but if you don't have the captain's rig, you can't do anything at the bridge. And we're going to pick up the most broken item in the game. <laughs> yes. Yeah, now we're finally out of the, you know, intro, if you will. Uh, obviously, there's, uh, you know, some movement and things, but yeah, you'll, you'll, the run changes pretty considerably from this chapter. This, this is where you'll, it you'll just see. gets off the rails. Yeah. It's going to go very quickly from here. Kinesis, you can pick up and move objects. Which, um, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> the nightmare of every dev team physics objects. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, one quick thing to note, too, is uh, there's a slight variance in what some people uh, do in terms of the uh, weapon routing. So some people pick up the pulse rifle. I don't opt to do that. Uh, you can. I'm honestly not even sure if it's faster um, either way. But um, I'm just going to grab this, uh, this guy for later. Uh, this is our companion cube. We're going to uh, bring him around for a little bit. Just going to throw that over there. Skip another rig video here. Uh, just going to make a quick... You know, safety save. You know, this game's scary. You know, we don't know what's coming up, so I just want to make sure we're covered there. Scary in a couple ways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I need to grab a couple items, so we're just going to... Oh, hold on. I don't oh, think this on. is OSHA compliant. Probably <laughs> not. Are we good? Yeah. All right. Hey! All right. Nice. Okay. First try every time. All right, so yes, boxes are very, uh, and kinesis are very broken in this game. Uh, that's called shock pad skip uh, because we jump straight to the shock pad there. But yeah, as you, as you can see there, we can, you know, fling boxes into ourselves and uh, clip us out of bounds, which is very useful. You're going to see it a lot, and we'll explain it a little bit more here because uh, we're going to do a couple more. And that skip's like a very lengthy quarantine fight, if I recall. Like, you go down, it's all ooga booga scary, and it's just, it, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how much it saves off the top of my head, but it's it's a it's a pretty good chunk. It's a good chunk. Good ten minutes at least. Oh wow, <laughs> ten minutes. Because you have to go through the bio lab as well. Oh geez, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so I mean, you might have heard that we can't skip objectives. We have to do every objective, but that doesn't mean we don't have big skips. <laughs> yeah, th this level is a really good example of that, where we're still doing everything. Um, so we grabbed the shock pad. We need to go grab a uh, hydrazine tank now. Um, and then make our way down to the morgue to find the, the captain's rig. But uh, there's a lot of shortcuts like that we can take. Um, and it really depends on the level. You know, It sounds like a lot when we say we have to do pretty much every objective, but sometimes there's a pretty big gap between one objective and the other. <clears throat> Excuse me. You, know, you might have to traverse the entire level uh, to get to the next objective. Yeah, a lot of backtracking that maybe you don't want to do. All right, so we're going to get introduced to Zero G here. Uh, this mechanic is updated a lot uh, from the original game. It's more similar to Dead Space 2 and 3, where we can fly around freely. Um, 
And one thing is uh, a, kind of a small detail. You can open doors while flying. You can't do that in the original games. I really like that change. I think it's cool. Um, but we're going to be uh, waiting for an audio log to play here because uh, we can't skip this one. It comes up too fast. So if you want to read another quick donation here, this would be a good time. Okay, I've got a $50 donation from Proetics that says, no comment. I don't want the space monsters to hear me. <laughs> Honestly, fair. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we'll talk about this more later. There's a little bit of prop flying in this game. I just used that to get on this ledge. Um, and now that we got the checkpoint, uh, we're going to do this. I'm actually going to try this at 30 if possible. Sometimes the game loads in too fast at high FPS. So by lowering it, you can too low. Am I too low? Yeah. Too low. Okay. Of course the game's grab the save. So uh, <laughs> I should mention, so um, depending on your load speed, certain tricks are a little bit different. So um, that's why, oops, I walked off the table. Don't do that. So yeah, I'll try it at 30 one more time. There's a backup you can do if you land on the ceiling here. It's not a huge deal. Actually, let me do it like this. Yeah, we throw boxes at Isaac's face. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 you know, I would, I would give a little more uh, description of it, but that, that is pretty much what we're doing there. All right, so we're going to do this version here. Um, basically, this level deloads and loads back in when you walk over here. There we go. Okay. Nice. nice. There we all go. Right, all right. <laughs> so that's uh, zero-G therapy skip. Uh, just skips a, a decent backtrack there. Yeah, you'll just have to bear with me a little bit. We're, uh, we got um, the FPS toggling working, um, but I am not... That's not typically how I do it with, with most of them. Um, that one's just a bit weird because um, you're actually doing the box clip at lower FPS and whatnot. But yeah, I think we should be good. Um, fun fact, that, that right there, you saw it for half a second. I believe uh, you were saying that's the only piece of non-diegetic UI in yep. the whole game. We were yep. trying to be really careful with everything being in-world and part of the environment, part of the game. Uh, that's, I think, the only case of it where it's not, actually. Yeah, that's one thing I always really liked about this series is the whole in-game uh, UI, especially with the um, the rig videos and whatnot. All right, uh, yeah, so we're doing another box clip. Uh, <laughs> like I said, you're going to see this a lot. Uh, they're all very different in terms of the timing and everything. Um, oh, okay, sweet. So, so we got this version. You want to talk a little bit about the uh, yeah, so the loads? Sharks here is going to use the proximity loading zones of our rooms to despawn and get back inbounds. Um, basically, every room has kind of a bounding box just outside of it where the level will load. And in some cases, we weren't too exact with it. And you can find just enough of a spot where you get out of the loading zone, the, and the room will deload, and you can fall back into it. Yeah, it is pretty rare to find those inbounds, to be fair. Um, but obviously, once you go out of bounds, you know, you're, not, you're not supposed to be on the ceiling. So no. it, yeah. we didn't expect that. It makes sense, yeah. yeah. And we try to load in um, for like smaller rooms like this. We will try to load in one adjacent room on each side so that you don't have any pop-ins or stuttering as you're going from room to room. Um, and then the bigger rooms, like the hangar or the engine room we'll see later, are so large and so heavy on performance that we do have to only load that room. And we'll try to load the next room as you approach the door. Mm. This is like probably the coolest cutscene in the game. I would honestly say, so this is the first time that we see a human being being transformed into a necromorph. Um, this is done, in my opinion, way better than the original. <laughs> and honestly should go down in horror history as like one of the best scenes in horror video games. Like honestly, it's so good. And this is actually the first cutscene we developed. Um, chapter two was our, our vertical slice level of where we were basically bringing all features up to functional to test out how the game itself worked. So you got multiple enemies, multiple weapon types, different types of cutscenes, um, and basically just proof of concept. Can we make this game? You know, does our feature set work? Mm -hmm. One little quick thing. I don't know if we mentioned with the rig skips yet. Uh, you'll see me pull up that specific text log a lot. Um, that's because uh, usually it is faster to close a text log than an audio or video log, and that's just the fastest one we can menu to because it's in chapter one. Um, so it, it, it can be any text log, and they, they will still work with any kind of log. It's just, you know, you can close them in one button instead of the other ones you get hit two. So, you know, the USG propaganda text log is just <laughs> yeah. the first one we get, so we're going <laughs> to read it a lot. Just can't get enough of it. So we're going we're gonna to take our companion cube here. Uh, we're not going to see this. So we're... we're transitioning from chapter two to three right now. 
Uh, we're not going to see this until chapter six, so we're just going to toss we abandoned him over him there. For a while. Yeah, he'll be okay though. Um, <laughs> so the reason for that is uh, there. You know, obviously the boxes, uh, the box clips are very useful, but it's a little limited in the sense that there's not boxes everywhere. It might kind of seem like it because we grab them all over the place, but uh, chapter six doesn't have any, I don't think, in the entire level. Um, and there's a spot where it, it saves a lot of time to have one, so it's going to be worth it to drag it over there. Uh, that slasher should still be here from earlier. Again, he's yeah. not supposed to be necessarily. Nice. I'm gonna try to get a little boost here. Oh, he's coming. Oh, he hit. Oh, he hit. Me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can do uh, something called chicken speed in this game, where you um, push a prop behind you, and it gives you a little bit of a boost. Um, it's called that because uh, Bach Soup found it. So it just people called it chicken speed. But that camera was stuck to your leg yeah. for a yeah. while. <laughs> All right. So next. So You'll see a case here of the proximity loading of the room where we missed a little bit, and it's just inside the actual level here. All right. I'm actually going to stopwatch here. Uh, there's no visual cues, as you can see here. Uh, and I need to fly forward for about 16 and a half seconds. So um, I usually just use a timer for this. It ends up being easier than trying to count it, you know? As you can see from uh, Isaac, it's a little cold in space, getting a little chilly. <laughs> It was made in Montreal. <laughs> true, true. All right, that should be good. Let's see. Okay. Can I get down? Might be savable. Oh, oh. oh. He's thinking about it. We're, I can Are move you... around a little bit. This is really weird. Are you moving while falling? <laughs> I yeah. sure am. What's that? It never happened before? Something, something. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, can, I don't know if I can get down from here. Can I? I can kind of wiggle around. Are there any bigger props? I, this is weird. I've never seen anyone. I haven't. Suck like this <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I haven't either. Shot. I right. mean, at least one of those moments was bound to happen at, <laughs> at some point during this run. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> let's fine. give that. Let's give that one more shot. Again, it could be some weird stuff with the you know the load speeds being slightly different, but you know it is, it, it it is what it is. It could have been slightly off as well. Just gives us another opportunity for chicken speed, which I am. Oh, I kind of got oh, it. Oh, a little oh, bit. Oh, a little oh. bit. All right. Well, <laughs> it seems like a couple seconds if you get a good one. That's fine. Right, let's grab my timer again real quick. It's neat. I love all the like prop shenanigans in this game. It's cool, yeah. <laughs> I could try, when I fly right, I could try 30 FPS, but I don't know how slow to load. All right. We'll just try it again, we'll see what happens. Isaac's suit employing that thermal protection again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny what the lighting does when you go out of bounds like this. <laughs> Also, a quick note about what I'm doing here. You can't really see, but we're flying straight down there. Um, and then I, I move the camera up a little bit and then uh, realign, which uh, reorients me. And then we fly right. And ideally, it doesn't put me oh, in the no. same oh, no. spot. <laughs> Isaac, please. Maybe I can, like, lower FPS, fall off. This is. Oh, no. You can't stomp or melee, can you? I don't think so, no. Mm. Yeah, All right. Um, I'll try it one more time, but I don't want to bleed too much time on it because it's it, it doesn't save that much. Maybe try 30 FPS to make it load a little slower. Yeah, I'll do that this time. Yeah, if it puts you on the bench instead of just above it, you should be able to get off. Oh, there we go. That's a decent one. Nice. You just had to perfect it, didn't you? There we go. <laughs> And we are currently on our way to engineering to fix up the engines, so there'll be a lot of fun engineering mini games. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this chapter, chapters two and three are probably one of the hardest parts of the entire run. There's just a lot of uh, difficult tricks, a lot of things that can uh, can happen. All right. 
go. Okay. Part one of truth. <laughs> yeah, it's just loading in slightly too early, so... Um, and there's a pretty big platform here, so it should be okay. That looks... There we go. Yeah. Wait. Yes. Oh, wait. There oh, we go. Right. Hey, all right. Nice. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> so uh, now we're in the uh, mining deck, which is not where we're supposed to be. Um, but fortunately, uh, it connects to uh, the engineering deck right here. Um, and the reason this route works out is we're able to unlock the tram here. Um, so that saves just a little bit of time in the next chapter once we're done here. And again, we can't do objectives out of order, so we have to run back to hit that. Gonna grab this fire extinguisher here. I love this skip. It's so stupid. So we're gonna use Isaac's collision to clip this fire extinguisher through this door, <laughs> hopefully. There we go, and hopefully that'll break. Yeah, I can, I can, nice. oh, okay. Okay. I can go into our bug database and set a bug to fix failed now. <laughs> we thought we fixed that. <laughs> So there's these things like called fuses, basically, that keep a door locked. Uh, so what Shark Hat did was he clipped a fire extinguisher through the door and used the explosion from the fire extinguisher to blow up the fuse just to get here earlier. There we go. The, the intention, I assume, is to make backtracking easier. So you break yep. the fuse, and then all of a sudden, now you have these two points of the map connected. But obviously, if you could just do it from the first time, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, we did want to make the ship a lot more open and have a little bit of that kind of Metroidvania feel of backtracking and opening up different routes. Um, and those fuses allow us to do that. Yeah, I think especially with the tram. Uh, mm -hmm. I noticed that Metroidvania vibe. Yeah. All right. And I think, like, beyond loading, there's no load screens. Like, when you actually yeah. load game, I mean. Not at all. Um, if you don't die or if you don't reload a save, you know, take a break and come back to the game, there is not a single load screen in the game. That's all one cut. That's it, yeah. All right, so I threw that prop over there. We're going to use that for a, for a prop fly. Um, actually, you want to talk a little bit about prop flying? Yeah, okay. so, of course, um, as a fan of speedruns, I tried lots of different techniques I've seen speedrunners use in our game, and prop flying was one of the first things I tried. Um, and it would fling Isaac quite far. <laughs> um, uh, my favorite one was to do was to completely skip that gondola ride and launch Isaac across the fueling room here twice. Um, we did nerf it quite a, quite a lot, but it's still somewhat in the game, as we'll see here shortly, just for little hovers. Uh, what kind of games did you look at when you were, like, studying speedruns? Oh, I've been watching for a long time, but uh, especially when it came to this, it was mostly third-person action games, like the Resident Evil games, Last of Us, um, God of War. Um, games where we, it kind of functions similarly. Awesome. All right. Uh, safety save here. Good yeah. call. The, I think it's because of the um, battle bounds that we do, because uh, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to get a checkpoint over here normally. But uh, when you sequence break, sometimes that doesn't really work. Uh, but the effect of that is the checkpoint is like really, really bad here. Spitter. And Yeah, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I would call probably one of the hardest skips in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, there's like a little... Yeah, I got it. Yeah, so he's trying to get this little cart under Isaac's feet here and ramming himself up into the railing while it's lifting him. There we go. Okay, there's part one. Nice. There we go. All right. So, yeah, the whole, I, I don't know if we've explained this yet, but the whole point of this is to basically skip uh, the gondola ride on the way back, and we're trying to get to the centrifuge as quick as possible. So we're just going to pause over here, let the level load in. Nice. Okay. All Good right. Two. There's that proximity loading again. Yeah. <laughs> so we could just fly into the centrifuge and fix it, but the only problem is once we leave, uh, there's a decontamination room and there's a door that's locked until we complete it. So the, the decontamination room actually isn't an objective. So, you know, like I said, in theory, we don't have to do it, but um, again, we can't actually escape unless we do it. So, okay. So just set my FPS to 30 here. Um, and that should be good. There we go. Nice. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Uh, that that should be good. Okay. So yeah, in practice that was a little tricky yeah. at the higher <laughs> FPS, but we got the like I said, we got the low FPS stuff working. We were we were uh, worried about that one yeah, for yeah. a while. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. And here we've got a little bit of an auto scroller. I can relax now. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. The rest of this chapter is pretty chill. There's one more skip we're gonna do, but um, it's it's pretty easy in comparison to the stuff we just did. I 
Hello. He's gonna see. Uh, Hello. Behind you. Oh my goodness. Okay, there he is. <laughs> oh. Okay, that up and oh, okay. All oh. right. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so uh, I should mention one thing that happened there is uh, again I'm using toggle aim, right? And um, you know if you haven't played with toggle aim before, it's a little awkward if you're not used to it. Um, and another thing is, is it okay? I don't know if it's the yeah. I don't. I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so uh, so you can't buffer the input, right? So when um, you have to actually tap it. Okay, I think my left and right might be flipped. I think that's why. It's confusing. All right. Uh, sorry, anyway. Um, so sometimes you'll see if I get hit and then I just punch in place, it's because I tried to press aim and then shoot again, but I hit aim too early and then you just end up punching in place. But, yeah. Decontamination sequence complete. Thank you. All right. So yeah, now that we did that out of the way, once we go back, the door will be unlocked. Um, so now we just have to go into the centrifuge here and fix that real quick. Um, these things are a little finicky sometimes. If it's not still slowed down by the time it goes all the way in, it'll just bounce all the way back. You got to do it again. <laughs> did that? I think that bounced. I, I thought I heard it go no, in. Oh, I think I heard. Oh no, I no, see yeah, it on the yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 Okay, yeah, so that, that enemy that just jumped at me, that's called a leaper. Um, <laughs> they do that, friend. they jump at you. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, sometimes they'll hit you right as you're about to pull it all the way in and it just doesn't work and then you gotta do it again. Um, and think, then, oh, go ahead. I think you have an excellent story about this centrifuge. Oh yeah. So this was uh, during where the, right after this room had been implemented uh, during a play session, uh, our creative director came down here and I noticed that the centrifuge was spinning differently from the original game. Um, having played it a lot, I was looking for all these details and I said, like, players are going to walk to the right here and they're going to get smushed and they're going to die and they're not going to be happy. And the director was like, good. And he just <laughs> smiled. <laughs> yeah, he wanted players to die in cool ways, for sure. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, you're, I guess, supposed to go to the right in like the original game, uh, but the intention is that you're supposed to go left in this game. So you're supposed to learn that lesson through dying, uh, but actually because we have that 16% speed boost, we could just go to the right anyways. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think you had to add a checkpoint at the top of that yeah. elevator too because like, of that. We don't want players to get too frustrated if they do <laughs> die, so we did add a checkpoint right before the centrifuge. Yeah, I feel like that's very in the spirit of the original game as well, just having your character die in a bunch of unique ways, <laughs> getting blasted by the centrifuge. I mean, yeah, the Ishimura is not a fair environment, so, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of safety standards that were kind of overlooked a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, intensity we, director. Oh, yep, these enemies oh, are a really good one. Uh, these are random enemies here, yep. All right, so yeah, we're going to do one more skip for this level. Uh, we're getting pretty close to the end of it. But uh, normally we're supposed to go through a whole bunch of stuff, a shimmy, uh, walk by the flamethrower, um, a bunch of rooms, a bunch of stuff to do. But uh, we can do another fuse break and skip all that and go straight to uh, the last objective, which is to uh, restart the engine. So uh, we're going to do a little bit different of a fuse break this time. Um, instead of using a prop, we're going to unaim, re-aim, and then shoot really quickly. And if we do it right, our shot will actually clip through the door. And um, if we aim in the right spot. Nice. Nice. Oh, That's nice. nice. All right. Does that hurt a little bit, or is uh, it? A little, a little. <laughs> we had found lots of other ways to yeah. break them during development, but that one, I, I love it. Just like shoving his the arm <laughs> through. Just a little quick <laughs> Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I mean. I mean, that's just part of development. You yeah. find 10 ways to do it, somebody will find the 11th after. <laughs> All right. So for this part here, uh, we're going to throw this battery in, and then not counting these enemies that are already here, uh, we'll get a bunch of random slashers to spawn. So we just got to kind of watch out, see where they show up. One there. Oh, 
do one more? Yeah, okay. There he is. Being, or like, I mean, you know, being in this room again and just like listening to all the sounds and stuff, the sound design in this game is so good. Oh, they did such a great Oh, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, the audio team did a fantastic job on this. I think that was like one thing I was looking for from like jumping from the original to this game was the sound. Because the sound in the original was so good. Mm -hmm. And somehow it's better in this game. I was not, I wasn't sure how it would live up to that. And it kind of well exceeded what I was expecting. Yeah, I mean, this is potentially controversial, but frankly, like, if you want, if you're trying to get into Dead Space, you can probably play this one instead of the original. It is that good. I mean, that's the highest praise we can ask for. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And, um, you know, the original game is obviously great as well. So I think if you're a fan of the series, it's definitely worth checking out all of them. But I, I think this game is a great place to start uh, for new players. Um, also, we're taking a somewhat lengthy uh, tram ride over to the next area, so this would be a good time to read a couple more donations. Thanks, Shark Hat. We have some really awesome donations for you. We have $50 from Snots Delta that says, by far one of my favorite horror games being run at GDQ. Sounds like a good time to me. Time to slay some necromorphs. You got this, Shark Hat. Thank you. Got time for a couple more. We also have $50 from Vent that says, nothing like a little late night, early morning dead space. And then I've got a little bit of a poem here. It's $50 from Disc Golfer 123 that says, an ode to death's dead space. This game sure seems dark with foes appearing at whim, but our runner's hat is a shark who always shoots for the limb. Good <laughs> luck, shark. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's for this. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, dude. I appreciate it. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we made it to the bridge, chapter four. Um, we got to meet up with Hammond. <clears throat> Excuse me. Got to meet up with Hammond real quick. And, uh, yeah, we actually got a uh, couple more minutes to, to chill here. So I'd actually say if you got um, a few more, uh, this would be a good time as well. Hi, Sorry. Sheepers. No, no. Keep that rifle close. The one that attacked me. But yeah, there's just a little bit of story stuff going on here. Um, we didn't see him in the beginning, but uh, Chen was one of the uh, security officers that came onto the ship and uh, got turned into a, a necromorph, unfortunately. Hammond's upset. And I think this is probably the first time that we actually see Hammond in the speed run because we skipped that intro, right? right. Um, I... Oh, we do see him in chapter one briefly. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Rather than taking out the necromorph, we launch it in an escape pod. Great decision. Probably fine. Johnston too. At least you spare becoming a monster. Yeah, like we said, uh, since there's multiple different kinds of cutscenes in the game, we can't necessarily skip all of them. Fortunately, the um, audio and uh, video calls, uh, those skips still work. That that shaves off a huge chunk of time, but there are, there are a couple places here and there. We gotta chill for a bit. I am going to pick up a text log here real quick. Um, there's a couple uh, rig skips where uh, you do need to, you have time to menu over and pick whichever one you want, but sometimes you need to just mash really fast. And so having one in chapter four here, because it, it always goes to the chapter you're on. So if you just open it and mash, you get this one instead. And text logs are just faster to close and a little bit less finicky than the video ones. Yeah, videos, sometimes you get that remnant that gets left up. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of UI bugs with some of the rig skips sometimes when you do them, if you do them really fast, especially. And yeah, like with the video ones in particular, yeah. Um, do we want to talk a little bit about the, the story a little bit, just to kind of catch up, catch people up where we're at at this point? Sure. Um, so we just reactivated the engines, and we're like, cool, I'm going to steer us into this active asteroid field because... Surely our asteroid systems are working. I mean, nothing else has been working up to this point, so surely <laughs> the asteroid systems are working, and then they weren't working, and we're just kind <laughs> of getting pelted with asteroids. So we got to go fix them, um, and Isaac is an untrained soldier, and Hammond is a trained soldier, so <laughs> Hammond's going to stay up here, and we're going to go fight the necromorphs. Ah, um, yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Isaac, the engineer, is going to go handle it. <laughs> He's got it. He does all the heavy lifting. <laughs> all right, this is a, a massive one-second time save or most something like that. Most important skip in the game. Mm -hmm. 
And we got nice. it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, there's a there's a short window where you can still have uh, control of your character um, right when the door unlocks uh, before that short little animation plays. So if you mash, you can, you can just open the door and <laughs> not have to wait for it to open. Okay, so now we're more properly starting the chapter here, and we're going to do a few more uh, cool tricks here. Uh, but first, we're going to fight this brute. Um, this is the first time we see this enemy. Uh, they're a lot stronger. Again, we're playing on story, so you know they still don't have a uh, crazy amount of health. But we're going to stasis him, uh, hit this weak spot from the front, hit the legs a couple times, and that should be it. That's it. Yep. Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, there's two levels below us uh, that we need to get to. Uh, so we're gonna take a little I bit. I love this of skip so much. I don't know why. <laughs> I like I like I like this level safety a lot. Safe. Oh um, yeah, safety save. Oh yeah, yes, so. yeah, just in just in case. Just in case. <laughs> I'm sure nothing would ever go wrong. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take a prop. We're gonna lay it down like this. Hold on. There we go. Okay. All right, and now we're just going to do a little prop fly over the ledge, and now we're out of bounds. And again, uh, aiming and unaiming changes your hitbox size, so I'm just going to do that a little bit, um, get the smaller and bigger hitbox to be able to move around here a little bit, and then we're just going to drop off. Oop. Oh, oh. There we go, nice. nice. Okay. All right, that's the first part. Yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. Yep. <laughs> All so right. every objective, but point A to point B as quick as possible, yep. regardless of floors or walls. <laughs> exactly. I, th I think this is a great example of that. Um, this is kind of funny. This this skip was found in the past couple months, and to be honest with you, we just didn't know there was a box in there. <laughs> yeah. We, like, we just hadn't checked. Um, I think what, Rampancy just posted a PB, and there was just a box there, and we were like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he found... I'm pretty sure he found this skip, and um, yeah, I had, I had no idea that was there. Um, we also picked up a new gun. We'll talk about that in just a sec. We're going to just fly out of bounds again real quick. You're out of stasis, by the way. Ooh, I'm on the ceiling. Okay. Uh, you get an auto save right before this. Uh, I'll do that one at 32, just in case. And that should be good. The computers are too good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, shout out to GDQ for having the same PC on stage as in the private practice room. Uh, that's extremely beneficial. I can imagine, Shark, for uh, a, like a run that's affected by hardware like this. Um, makes practice a lot easier, I can imagine. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Oh, these guys are hitting me during the cutscene. All right, that's cool. That's fine. On higher difficulties, they can kill you during them. Yeah. Well, the whole squad showed up. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. Is he still alive? Yeah. Okay. All right. Hold on. Where did it go? Okay. Yeah, sometimes when other uh, grabbable objects show up, it makes it a little more annoying to, <laughs> to grab the box because there's, there's priority over what uh, objects the game wants to grab. Yeah, we try there to we get go. you um, the impalers first, then ammo, health, money stuff. Is that too late? I think, I think you might have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's too low. Okay. Um, and then it will grab other random physics objects, which unfortunately the boxes fall under. So any of the necromorph parts, little prop objects, or... Oops. Yeah, they call it, kind of fall okay. to the same category there. What? <laughs> Ooh, you may have lost uh, your... That's weird. You'll choose I have save. Choice. I have other save. That's fine. That's just uh, that's a little odd. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. Maybe it... Like the... Yeah. Uh, I know why. Hold on. That thing. What was that? Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Um, so that you saw, might have saw very briefly. Uh, shout out to Hazeblade. He made a uh, save injector tool. Uh, that lets us replace uh, autosave files. That's what we use to skip the intro. Um, I think I had an overlapping hotkey with a river tuner there, so that makes sense. All right. Oh, oh nice okay, nice. Good. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I was like, <laughs> how did you not get stuck? Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, 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 uh, I don't know. We don't, we don't complain. <laughs> I'll take it though. Yeah, we, we tried really hard to not allow players to get off of ledges and stuff like that, and, or get on them. So if you do get stuck loading in on one, it's pretty hard to get off. All 
All right, let's try this again. Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay, good. there we yeah, go. Nice. nice. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> all right, so yeah, again, that just gets us a shortcut right there. Skips this whole maze section. Also skips all the enemies that are in it, too, which is good for saving ammo, which surprisingly can become a problem, especially in the late game. Like, you wouldn't think because story, but um, I think you said at one point there's like a loot system that sort of tracks that stuff. Yeah, so there's the two kind of balance uh, features, which are the intensity director and then the loot manager. And the loot manager basically looks at your current health, um, how many med packs you have in your inventory, your ammo counts, what guns you have equipped, and decides what to drop for you. Um, so if you're low health, no ammo packs, it will try to spawn a med pack for you from an enemy. Or if you're very full on health, it will drop you some credits or stasis packs, ammo. Okay. All right. Doing something real important here. <laughs> Oh, jump scare. All right, so this is not required, but I, d I wanted to show this off. This is a unique Easter egg specifically to this version of the game. And it's a sea shanty. And we're going to equip our new gun we got. It goes on for a while. <laughs> it does. I hope, you, I hope you all like sea shanties. <laughs> Um, I don't know if we mentioned, uh, we picked up this gun called the Contact Bean as well. Um, it's the only other gun we're going to pick up. Uh, there are other guns in this game that are really, really good uh, and would, would be useful, but um, especially on story, there's not too much of a, of a need for them. Um, and the Contact Beam, um, besides being good for combat, is good for some skips as well. I mean, the Contact Beam is kind of just the best gun in like the, the series, right? <laughs> like, Usually it's one of the, of the best guns yeah. Yeah, in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, yeah, that, that is a really long sea there shanty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I love that guy. He just make us, but we're there so quick, he doesn't... <laughs> he just disappears. All right, we did not get trolled. This rig skip is really weird sometimes. Okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, it trolled us a little bit, but... It's like That's specifically yeah, that one. I don't know. Too. I don't know. That one, there's something weird about it. I don't know what it is exactly. So we rerouted power, but the ADS cannons aren't calibrated, so they're just not going to do anything. Yeah, this is one of the largest changes we made to the original game uh, was the complete removal of the just you know, auto cannon ADS function for this more immersive, go outside, you know, actually aim them yourself. Um, just a little more interactive. Yeah, I like I, li I like this uh, a lot more just because you know it's 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 not an auto scroller. If you if you do it well, you can get through it more quickly. But then again, if you you know make mistakes, then you then you can lose time. So I guess that's yeah. that you know there's that. <laughs> <laughs> or an asteroid hits you. Yeah, the asteroids are random where they show up here, so you kind of just have to react to what you get here. And then you might see this happen. Um, the other two cannons, now that they're calibrated, uh, will try to snipe your shots. Well, maybe not try to, but they just home in on asteroids that are coming in, and sometimes they oh, stole right a shot. There. Yep, just <laughs> like that. Yep, okay, we're good, though. All right, um, so we are going to try a skip here. This is kind of... I'm going to say there's like a 10% chance this works. This is also a new skip. It's kind of a meme. Um, it's called Big Booty Skip Skip <laughs> because there, well, there's a whole explanation, but, um, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's, we're going to try to get this door to clip us through the floor here and it, uh, hopefully will, well, ideally it would put us, uh, back on the bottom floor and it just skips, uh, the elevator rides here, but it is pretty inconsistent and you also need to hit a, uh, pause buffer timing without really any uh, visual cues, which is always fun. Nah, nah, you got this. <laughs> you got this. But yeah, we'll try it once. Uh, if we don't get it, that's totally fine. We'll just go down the normal way. But uh, I just thought, I mean, it looks cool if we get the clip. Yeah. I just love how it puts Isaac into an animation that, like, we didn't intentionally make. Like, it's... <laughs> You're never meant to fall in this game off ledges right. or anything. Oh, But it somehow puts him in the backflip you get from zero G. It's very weird. For some reason, damaging yourself makes it more consistent sometimes. Yeah, it's very, uh, very finicky. There oh, we go. Oh, it, yeah. oh, we got yes! it! Yes! Oh! <laughs> no way! 
Oh my god, I can't believe you got that. Uh, <laughs> would you all believe that's the first time I've ever hit that in a run? <laughs> that is that's incredible. Crazy. Yeah, that, I think that says 45 to 60 seconds, something like that. I don't, I don't actually remember, but that's that's insane. I, can't I believe cannot that believe you just did that. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, good thing I remember to skip the rig videos first, right? Because uh, that would have been bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. So you actually do have to trigger those rig uh, videos for the objective, the update here. Um, so you know, see so you return to medical deck. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I can't believe that worked. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've ever seen it, like, fully just work. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. That's, yeah. That skip is incredible. It can knock you all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, ideally, it puts us pretty much where it did, actually. Uh, that really... Um, big room with a really tall ceiling, it makes it way more likely you'll actually load in. Um, it The game lags as it starts to load the level in, so you can kind of try to time it based on that, but it, I mean, you don't always get sent in the same spot, so it's kind of kind of hard to tell. But awesome. All right, well, that takes us into Chapter 5 here, so we are back in the medical deck. It looks pretty different, um, especially once we get into the next few rooms, but um, we get introduced to another... Uh, Another villain here, Dr. Mercer. He's doing all kinds of experiments and stuff. Um, we'll, we'll meet him pretty soon. Uh, but before that, we are going to do one more uh, big skip. We're going to do another fuse break uh, to skip a bunch of, um, you know, taking some elevators. Uh, I guess I guess the puzzle, there, there's there's these tentacles you have to destroy to, to clear the path. We're going to skip that as well. I'll be honest, I think I completely forgot what you do when you don't do this. That's why I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too long. It's just uh, up that hallway and you turn right. Nice. Nice. All right. So, uh, again, we're not supposed to go in through that way. I'm walking over to here uh, to hit a low trigger, which will spawn in uh, that dude right there. All right. And we got another uh, about two-minute cutscene here. So uh, this would be a great time for some more donations. You... Got it, Shark Hat. I have a $5 donation from Backside of Water that says, All glory to he who wears the shark hat. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a $50 donation from Chief Rocker HD that says, Hey, just here to say thank you for this awesome event and this hilarious run. Keep it up and have a great night shift. Over here in Germany to watch this run makes a perfect start of my day. Let's break the physics in dead space even more. We'll do our best. Yeah. <laughs> I do also want to take the time to remind everyone that we have some really awesome incentives, like the secret showcase for Orbo's Odyssey, and we're already at 31% for that, and I do know that that was Shark Hat's choice, so I can't wait to see what that secret is all about. Do you have time for one more donation? Yeah, maybe uh, two more. Okay. We have $25 from DadFax that says, Love the Dead Space series and the speedrun community. Let those necromorphs have the Ishimura shark hat, but still go fast. And we have a $5 donation from Mr. Mars that says, My goat horror game. Thanks for doing this. Lost a family member to cancer. Thanks for running this game. Thanks to awesome developers for a great job. I'm sorry for your loss, and uh, thank you everybody for the donations. It's much appreciated. Um, you actually might have time for one more. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can pull up one more donation for you. Let's see what we've got here. We've got $5 from Testa that says, Greetings from the UK. Got a snow day, working from home, and a day of speed runs to keep me going. Hype, let's go. Let's go. All right, so this is the, uh, the regenerator here, uh, also known as the hunter. Um, if we take both arms off like that, it forces the regeneration animation, and that uh, triggers the end of this sequence a little bit quicker. Yeah, there are two triggers there, him forcing regeneration or just a hard timer will trigger the conversation with Kendra. Uh-oh, I forgot to blast him. So I, I, that's the strat I usually do there, um, but we were talking about it, and we think it's a little better to blast them with the, the contact beam. See if I can get them on the way back. I mean, those little, I guess, creepy crawlies, when they hit you, you can't um, you can't toggle aim anymore. It, like, forces you to unaim, which 
we move faster when we toggle aim, so we don't want that. All right. So yeah, there's not a lot of uh, too crazy uh, skips in this level. We're about to do one, um, but after this level, that's that's really when uh, the run's going to start picking up again. We're going to do a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, but this is called Poison Skip. Also, that event right there, uh, where your camera snaps there, uh, that's supposed to happen in Chapter 2, but we skipped this. Um, and it's still there. It still works here. Um, oh, yeah, you can stasis incredible. doors, by the way. <laughs> the skip is incredible. Yeah. So uh, we stasis the door to slow it so it doesn't close in on us. And we got to wait here for a moment. If we go too fast, it, like, messes up the objectives and actually causes us to just straight up soft lock. So we have to... Be very careful where we go. Like, we can't go outside that door until the whole story beat finishes. So the stasis in the doors was something we did think about in development, and most of the doors that lock when there is a story beat, um, we did remember stasis shouldn't affect them. It should close and lock behind you. Um, and this one we forgot, or <laughs> didn't check, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. We were talking about this for the longest time. Um, I just couldn't get it. And it, it's it's pretty easy to do, uh, and I just couldn't figure out why. And you're supposed to let the door close all the way first. If you don't do that, it like doesn't doesn't work. Um, cause it, it's, it's about halfway, and then... Um, yeah, then it just closes on you. Yeah, Shark Guy was trying to figure it out one day, and it just wasn't letting the door like open fully, and I was like trying to type it. <laughs> But I kept getting buried in like a mountain of other, like, try this, try that. <laughs> and I was like halfway through a Discord message when he's like, oh, maybe I have to let it open fully. Ah, <laughs> oh, there you go. You got it. Yeah. But yeah, that was Poison Skip, so that uh, just cuts out a little bit of time waiting there. Um, kind of surprised those guys didn't grab. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, they're just all spread out. All right. <laughs> that's. that's <laughs> I like, um, it's like another good, like, I guess, audio, piece of audio design, like the music that plays when they're, like, scurrying about and stuff like that. Like, like the music's violins. like, yeah, yeah, it's like intertwined with the encounters. It's just, it just works really well. All right, so we get to chill with Mercer again here real quick. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this specifically yet, but we actually don't want to have any health packs in our inventory. We're not going to get a suit upgrade. Normally, if you do that, you would get more rows here of available slots to hold you know, guns, ammo, other items, and stuff like that. But um, on story, uh, when you take damage, after a few seconds, the game will automatically refill your health back to full. Um, and so because of that, there's no real reason to actually carry health packs in the first place. So whenever I grab them, I actually do need to make sure I get rid of them because I want to hold as much ammo as possible mm -hmm. instead. Yeah, the story mode was a big push for accessibility we had on the project of just letting as many people play the game as possible. Um, you know, it might be too dif difficult for some, so give them this option to play through it. Yeah, and we have, uh, we do have categories for impossible as well. It's a pretty different run. You get to see some more guns. Uh, the line gun is really good in this game. Uh, we won't see it, unfortunately, in this category, but uh, the uh, the alternate fire is these uh, these laser traps, these laser beams. Um, but you can put them on props too, <laughs> so you can just put like yeah. four of them on a box and then just melt everything. It's awesome. Yeah, I remember when that was found. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's really good for impossible too, where um, you know you don't have as much damage, enemies have more health and whatnot. Um, all right, we're gonna have a really really hard boss fight here, real quick. All right, so we're gonna. <laughs> Slow him down real quick. Hold Just on. kneecap him. Yeah. Hold on. Ah, right, we got it. Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, that that's actually pretty much the same way you do it in the original as well. You just got to freeze him in there. So you know we have an ability that can slow him down. So pretty straightforward there. And for some reason, this door specifically you have to open twice. It like opens and closes, and then you have to open it again. It's really weird. It's the only one in the game that does that. All right, I hope you all remember our uh, companion cube from back in uh, Chapter 2, because we're about to see that again coming up in a second here. Uh, like I said, there's no boxes in the, the level we're going to here, so it actually makes sense to, to leave it there, um, because it's on the way. That's where we're going now. This box will travel far and wide. 
it basically does. across the whole map. Yeah, and that, that's one of the nice things about having uh, toggle aim sprint is uh, you can carry items at full speed. Um, you know, in the, in the original games, if you want to move a prop across the level, um, you have to you know you have to aim, and that's really slow usually, or like try to toss it around and stuff. All right, there it is. Did we decide on a name for our companion cube? I believe it was Frank. Yeah. Frank. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to be uh, escorting Frank all the way across this, this entire level here. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> I assume there wasn't uh, an official development name for them. Or no, unfortunately <laughs> not. Were there any, like, funny development names that you gave to certain stuff? Oh, not that I can think of. Um, no, nothing off the top of my head. They were too busy prop flying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm so jealous. I think you said there was a, a bug at one point where the necromorphs were like the size of... Oh, yeah. There's tons of great bugs we had. <laughs> um, yeah. Mini, mini necros was a funny day. Uh, they're all about knee height, just running at you. Um, some other good ones was uh, uh, sometimes when Isaac is stomping, especially near a corpse or uh, on an enemy, he'll swear. You know, he's got a pretty foul mouth. Um, and it's not meant to happen otherwise. Um, but it was on every single stomp Isaac would do, he would swear. <laughs> <laughs> that should be like a, I don't know, an Easter egg or like a New Game Plus thing. Like the foam finger, just, except he just swears all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, that was the only store visit of the run. Uh, again, just to buy ammo. Um, just to make sure we have enough. We probably won't run out either way, but it usually helps a little bit. Are you on like an auto scroller there, and so that's why you picked that spot, or? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, because uh, there is there is a, a call that you get there, but um, it's one of the few that it comes up so fast that you don't even have time to open the menu and open the log first. I think. Um back at Poison Skip, what that whole sequence would have described to us is that the air is basically poison and we have to fix the problem. Um, so we have like this enzyme that we're going to go and inject into these things called Weezers. Uh, there's eight of them on this level in total, so we just got to... We're going to take this box with us everywhere, the whole way on this chapter, and it's just to avoid a bunch of backtracking, which uh, you'll see later on. So you'll see the first Weezer coming up here. Basically just run up and interact, and Isaac will inject him. And we yeah. do that eight times. Is it eight times, or am I... Uh, six. Yeah. Okay. Six. Uh, I think, I believe it's eight. Yeah, four on each side. And you have to do all of them. Yes. Oh, here's a funny thing that happens with uh, elevators. Oh, we're good. Okay. Yeah, so if an enemy is too close or even on top of an elevator or a lift, it uh, just will not move. Ooh. Oop. That's fine. We'll just take him with us. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there was so many bugs that happened if enemies got onto elevators and moved with them. Like, just moving nav meshes is just terrible. Um, so we just said, if, if an enemy gets on it, stop. No elevator movement. All right. Um, we get uh, okay. There's some enemies behind us. Yeah, like it, like we said earlier, the intensity director can spawn enemies pretty much wherever. So it's always fun trying to deal with that. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I don't know if we mentioned explicitly, uh, but uh, one important difference is we can't just uh, shoot the weezers. That's how you take them out in the original game. So you'll see. You know, maybe there's one up on the on the top floor, and you can uh, you can just snipe it from the bottom. Uh, in this case, we gotta actually walk all the way up to them, but it, it wouldn't change the route too much. Uh, most of them, you have to walk pretty much all the way up to them to see them anyway. Yeah, Cross has a special voice line if you do try to shoot them. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it. Probably not while the computer's talking, I guess. And Cross has, like, a, like went from a side character to, like, just a much more, I think, important character in the remake, and I... I really like what was uh, what was done. Oh yeah, that, that's that's one of my personal favorite story changes. I think. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad that Motive wasn't afraid to make changes, especially to such a classic game. Like that was a 
potentially risky move, honestly, but sure. it really paid off. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of consideration to where things just didn't hit right in the original, or that the second and third games did actually improve. Hmm, great intensity director spawn. Yep, that's, uh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like a lot of like the zero-g flying, a lot of the kinesis and impaler, how it functions was just not as good in the original. Um, and Dead Space 2 really improved on that. Yeah. I think Definitely. the zero-g flying in particular, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which I imagine in this, it's, it's got to be much harder to really just <laughs> polish and iron out as opposed to how it was in the original. And then when it came to the story, um, a lot of the what happens in Dead Space 2 and 3, I don't think was originally written when um, Dead Space 1 originally came out. So all those additional things, like the Brethren Moons and stuff, uh, we tried to add kind of hints to them in the game back so that the story makes a little more sense uh, narratively. Oh, yeah, I do remember some of that in the in the side missions, too. <laughs> and this skip, I believe, is uh, yeah. your skip. Yeah, so this one we actually did find in development, and... You'll see here he's shooting the contact beam using the AOE explosion to blow up some pustules, which will take out the tentacles there. So yeah, I discovered this in development and called it out. And it's one of those cases where players are pretty unlikely to find it themselves. And it doesn't break the game. You can actually do this whole level backwards, per se. Um, and it functions perfectly fine. It's just one of those things where it's more expensive and more time consuming to fix it. And it's not worth it in the end. Yeah, so the one we're about to see, uh, not not this one here, is, uh, yeah, the next one is uh, Weezer number eight. Oh, there's some enemies here, that's fine. Um, and we're actually going to be killing the seventh one last. And again, this is the Good. same box we've been carrying with us the whole way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we're almost at the point where we actually need to use this now. Almost. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so like we said, we're, we're, we're going in uh, backwards here. You're normally supposed to go down this elevator. We're going up instead. And we're just going to pop into this room on the right real quick and toss that over there. Use that in a second. Just like in Portal, you leave it in a fiery room. Exactly. And there's a whole bunch of stuff going on down there with all that, but that's what we basically skipped with... Um, the tendril skip that um, you yep. mentioned earlier. Alright. So... He's gonna use it. What's he gonna do with his box? <laughs> I wonder. There we go. Gotta be careful on this one. It's really easy to let go too late and have it fling you out of bounds. And we, we just wanna... We, we wanna go a little out of bounds, not... There we go. Okay. Oh, nice. All right, so uh, that's the zero-G room we were just in, and so by landing there, we're going to get zero-G. Um, I don't know if we mentioned explicitly, but um, unlike the original games, this is more of a bounding box. Uh, once you get zero-G in this game, you can keep flying until the game uh, loads in some more stuff. Wow, yeah, so there we really go. Nice. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just flipping the FPS there, but yeah. And the All right. works. Yeah, there's a weird... I don't know what causes it, but sometimes uh, that panel's still red and you can't interact with it, and then you just got to do the skip again. <laughs> um, we're still not sure exactly why it happens. Uh, fortunately, it is uh, pretty rare, and we didn't encounter it that time, so that's good. All right, we got a boss fight here. Fairly similar-ish to the original, but obviously the Zero-G mechanics are different, so it's been reworked a bit. Um, I'm going to try this. Uh, I, you actually pointed this out to me just in uh, the practice room, actually. I didn't know about this, but um, if you fly too close to the Leviathan, um, it does this little animation, and it causes the uh, tentacles to uh, attack you a little bit quicker, which is cool. But you got to be a little careful because, again, if you you know go too close, it'll just blast you back again when you're trying to shoot them. Yeah, basically just canceling the animation of it taking damage. And now Sharkat's going to go something... Uh, called two cycle basically, and this timing was something I sort of developed over an afternoon, nice. which is basically 
He comes to the left, comes to the right, and as he's slowly going back towards the center, that's the exact point when you can hit him with um, basically a contact beam blast. I don't know what else to call it. Yep, the all fire. <laughs> yeah. um, so you'll see right here, he did it once, he has to do it again, left, right, as it's going back nice. in. Nice, nice. All right, I got both of them. Nice. Yeah, that was really fast. <laughs> yeah, the contact beam does a whole lot of damage. And if you don't do that, there's like a whole basically auto-scroller fight where it's shooting giant blobs at you, if yep. I remember. And um, yeah, definitely saves a good chunk of time. I don't know the exact amount. Well over a minute, I would imagine. <laughs> All right, so uh, pretty good chapter six. Uh, and we're heading into chapter seven now. And uh, this chapter is pretty wild. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it. Um, you'll see. Uh, but it is, uh, it's pretty crazy. The, the beginning, it's, it's a little bit of a slow burn, but uh, once we get past the, the beginning of it, it's, it's just skip after skip. Yeah. If you thought chapter two was crazy, this is like chapter two dialed up to 11. It's insane. Was meant to be one of the longest chapters in the game, and it's now one of the shortest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this this chapter in the uh, in the original game is is by far the longest in the speedrun. It's it's so long, <laughs> so it was really cool to me that we were able to break this one a bit. Um, I did say there was a slow start here, but we actually are going to start with a uh, small skip here. So we're going to try to inch up and get off this elevator. Nice. nice. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit tricky there, trying to get close enough where the doors don't you know automatically close on you and you know being able to get off there. But uh, the point of that is uh, the elevator is going to be going down now by itself. And normally uh, there's a fight that happens where the elevator stops, a bunch of enemies spawn, you kill them, short pause, and then you go back down. But that only happens if you're actually standing on the elevator. So what's going to happen is uh, it's just going to keep going all the way down. It reaches the bottom, the door will unlock, and then I'm going to use this box to kind of push myself off the, the ledge here. I, Isaac really doesn't like to walk off ledges uh, in this game. You're not really supposed to. We tried so hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll actually hear the fight trigger as you go down. Yeah, I think if you go too early, the elevator will stop and you're basically soft locked. Yeah, it's basically it's just a plane you'll pass through. There we go. Yeah, I just right had to there. wait a little bit there um, for a visual cue to know it was safe to drop down. It seems like the elevator door there unlocks at different times. It's not always exactly the same for some reason. So you just got to keep a lookout for that. Um, oh, yeah. So again, on story. So, you know, the death lasers, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> and they were good. Yeah. All right. This box isn't going on quite as long of a journey. Uh, but we are going to be using this a couple times here. Boxes are pretty useful in this run. All right, we'll see this room a lot, too. Um, the, the whole objective here is we're trying to launch an SOS beacon, um, so we keep coming back here, trying to fix things, trying to send it. All right. So uh, there's four different decks of this area of the ship. Uh, we're about to go to processing deck, and uh, that's where, uh, I guess, the fun begins, so to speak. And the flavor of what's happening right now, basically we're here because we're trying to launch an SOS beacon, so hopefully someone can, another ship can come and try to figure out what's going on. Basically the same situation we're in now, but a different ship, hopefully better armed. Um, more engineers. Yeah. More engineers, <laughs> specifically engineers. Yeah. yeah, and the engineers have set up a lot of booby traps and destroyed everything that Isaac is trying to use here. All right, here we go. So, um, you know, as we've said before, um, as long as there is a shortcut we can take from one objective to the other, uh, we can abuse that as long as we're able to, you know, watch the lighting. jump out of bounds. Yeah, this is probably one of my favorite skips in the game. Believe it or not, that's the last time we're going to ride that elevator for a while. Yeah, you're, you're supposed to use it a lot in this level. Um, we're going to try to not do that, <laughs> if possible. All right. So uh, this is processing deck skip, you know, on the processing deck. Makes sense, right? Um, this actually was one of the first box clips found in the game, I'm pretty sure. Oh, first try. Yeah. Nice. Let's nice. Go. <laughs> all right. That's great. So you're supposed to go all the way around the other way, and this is the exit, you know, so we're just going in the back end and um, skips that entire room yeah. over there in the zero G. 
Um, you don't have to destroy the asteroids. There's a huge fight in there. Oh. <laughs> All right. Seamless clip. So after we grab this, the only objective next is to grab the beacon. So ideally, we're going to skip about five minutes of gameplay here by flinging ourselves out of bounds. There we go. He is falling two entire floors. Ah, uh, a little too late. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this one this one's a bit tricky, especially with the uh the timing there. Um let me let me give it one shot on capped actually. Um sometimes if you get enough speed, you can make it sometimes. It can be a little finicky. It's definitely I don't know if it's a particularly hard trick. It's just it's just finicky. <laughs> Yeah, again, uh, th th this one in particular, uh, actually that I do need. Uh, too low. Too low, okay. Nah. Yeah, so it's, it. Um, there, there's a, I mean, you know, with the whole, you know, the game loads in as you move around the level, um, you know, it, depending on how fast or, or slow it loads, it can be a little different. So um, it's mostly just getting used to it on a, on a new setup, essentially. Yeah, and the launch angle and launch speed you get is fairly random, so you have to pretty adapt on the fly. Oh, that's why the load is slowest on 30 FPS. <laughs> that makes sense. That's better speed. Let's see if that works. That'll probably... Ah, uh, you know, actually, yeah, I think I paused too soon, but that actually might have worked. Was that uncapped there? That was, yeah. 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 Alright, but yeah, fortunately for us, the beacon room is pretty much right below us, so as long as we land in the level there, um, it, again, like I said, it skips about five minutes. All right, let's try that. And you could fail this skip. Nice, we got nice. it. 20 okay. times. Oh, go. that was perfect. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Okay. And you could fail that skip 20 times and still save minutes. Yep. Because um, you'll recall there's a big gondola ride here where Nicole comes out. She's actually alive, sort of. And um, basically you're riding and it just it takes forever. There's a lot of dialogue, but we just skip all that. All right, so uh, shout outs to Looney here. This trick is called uh, Looney Fly. Um, Looney might actually be a little bit confused why I'm doing it this way. Um, there's a different way to do it that's a little faster, but um, it's very specific with the, uh, the load speeds and whatnot, and um, we figured this was a little bit uh, safer to go for. Um, basically, uh, again, Isaac doesn't like to walk off ledges, so I'm basically just trying to... There we go, okay. Oh, nice. So I'm trying to get off there, um, and then we're going to get into this corner over here. All right, nice. Okay. Easy. Uh, need my stopwatch. Stick one. All right. This so is another uh, one of those tricks where you're not going to see anything. So stopwatch very important. All right. So we're going to launch here, and then we're going to fly left for a little bit. Um, yeah, like you said. I mean, once uh, this disappears, there's. I mean, <laughs> dead space. It, de yeah, pretty much. There's there's not much to uh, to go off of there. So yeah, now we're just going to fly forward for like. 20, 30 seconds, and then ideally, if we set all of this upright, it will put us pretty much right back at that control room we were at before and skip a whole long uh, elevator sequence, including another fight you normally have to do. Isaac's suit turning into a star once again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, right about here, we're going to slow off on the sprint there. Nice, we got it. Okay, awesome. Right, let's go. All right. Oh. <laughs> grabbed again. There's always one of those guys that doesn't die. Ooh, and, and oh, and some more enemies. Nice. And coming up is a skip that I theorized like back when the game first came out. And I'm really happy to see that it finally came to fruition. Um, which is basically skipping from this room. The asteroid's right there, so we can just skip right out of this room into the asteroid. But the problem was we couldn't get back up because the elevator was attached to a power source. Um, but we have a different way to get around that now. Nice. nice. Okay, that's really good. That box flip was really hard. Okay. So uh, I actually don't know if we have an official official name for this. Um, I, I started calling it Pretzel Skip. Um, so shout outs to community member uh, Simistery. Um, I'm pretty sure he, he, he suggested that as the name, um, I think because he was eating pretzels. But it actually kind of <laughs> makes sense because uh, we're doing a very weird path all around the level here. Um, so we, we just skipped having to grab a battery to power a lift and walk all the way down. Um, and we need to do another out of bounds here, not only because it's faster, but because if you don't uh, power the lift, you can't get back up either. 
So uh, you can actually fit through the geometry here, <laughs> and then a lot nice. of this isn't uh, isn't solid. So we're just going to kind of drift out of bounds here. And we're going to align, fly over here. And ideally, if we do all this right, we're going to end up right back in the, in the, same, the same control room again uh, for the last time. So it should load in around here-ish. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I don't know the exact timing. It was just somewhere around there. All right, so then we're going to fly down, and depending on when it loads, there's a... Oh, oh nice. There okay, there Ooh. we go. Cool. All right, and now we're going to do one more trick in Chapter 7 here. A very important trick. Nice. That's nice. really good. Okay. All right, so that is quarantine skip. Oh, hey, bud. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that can happen here sometimes. So um, this is actually uh, two skips in one, uh, hopefully. And by that, I mean, if you see that save station over there, you see how it uh, had that red bar on it? Uh, and the same thing on the store. So um, when you have a quarantine state, uh, you're not able to use save stations, stores, other things like that. Um, but more importantly, uh, you can't have another quarantine start at the same time. Now, uh, casually, there's, there, I, it's impossible to do that. You can't start one and then go somewhere else because you get locked in. But since we clipped out and we leave, um, in chapter nine, there's going to be a quarantine fight, and if we manage to get there without having, without dying or reloading checkpoint, um, when we go through the room, the fight will just not play, and uh, it saves a good chunk of time. Yeah, the game um, basically thinks you're already in a quarantine, so it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the uh, the door state actually doesn't allow it to go back into quarantine. The enemies will spawn if you wait. Oh. Like it'll play as normal. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that I that I actually did not know. That's cool. Today. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I think the first time it happened was I, I did a run with Quarantine Skip here because it was new at the time. And then um, I was just going through Chapter 9, and uh, the fight just didn't play. And I was thinking, is what I, I was very confused, and I was a little worried we wouldn't be able to replicate it or it would be something really weird. Uh, but fortunately, it's, it's very easy to replicate. It's just, you know, fingers crossed, can't... Uh, can't die. The only thing that can really go wrong is in um, the the skip we're about to do in chapter eight. Um, or so. the lasers. There is silent. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. The instant death lasers could be a could be a thing, but um, you know I think we got it. All right, don't need my stopwatch anymore. I'll put that away. Um, so we haven't gotten a random tram crash yet, but uh, this one is scripted. Uh, spoilers in like a second here. Or to whenever it is somewhere in like the middle, but yeah. So this one always happens, so you get kind of an idea. Um, this one, obviously, we can't avoid. Um, you really don't want this to happen anywhere else. Um, it's not not great. Um, and again, it's uh, I, I don't know if there's a specific. Uh, you said the intensity director is uh, it's like one yeah, ten, right? So I can kind of explain it. Um, it's a sliding scale of low to high, um, and as you enter or exit each room, um, the, the, it will decide to stay where it is, go up, go down, and then it will choose from a long list of events uh, to play something that matches that intensity. So if you're on the low end of the things, it might be you know, a fan spinning faster or breaking, um, some fog in the room, just something to build up the tension. And then as the scale gets higher, it'll be enemy spawns um, in ran with different random placements, different enemy combination types. Uh, to then give you some more action. And on the higher end, I think in the kind of the upper half is uh, the tram crash. Yeah, it's I, I, we, we don't know what the exact uh, chances are. It, it's it's pretty low, but um, you know, it, it could always happen. All right. Um, also, I you know I I, I feel like y'all uh, know what's going on here at this point. We're uh, box clipping through the wall. Um, and that actually just, puts us... There we go. Yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that just puts us right um, at the puzzle here. Um, the first objective is just to, to complete this. So um, we're pretty, pretty lucky that that works out. And the whole point of this is um, the SOS beacon we just sent out on the prior chapter. A ship came in, and we're like, oh, we, we probably want to talk to him, but the comms are raised down. So that's the whole point of this. One of the hardest parts in the game to balance as developers is always puzzles. And this one, we had a very frustrating play session where after putting lots of polish into this, we thought it was really fairly obvious what players should be doing. And we had a group of playtesters come in, 
and it ranged from taking some players five minutes to a player taking two hours Ooh. to complete the puzzle. And at that point, we just said, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that sounds like a tough problem to solve, you know. All right, another uh, section. We're actually going to skip three rig videos here. Um, really don't want to miss these. These uh, waste a lot of time. We got them. Nice. So, and those rig calls in a, in a truly what else could possibly go wrong scenario. Um, that escape pod that we, you know, sent out back in chapter four that had a necromorph on it. They're like, hey, we, uh, we picked up your buddy. We got him. <laughs> oh, no. And we're trying to talk to them. Like, no, maybe maybe don't pick him up, but now we got to go, you know, send out the antenna and, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not the best thing that could have happened, necessarily. It's okay. Isaac's here to fix it. Oh, yeah. Have we seen dividers yet? This is the first time. I think that's the first one, yeah. And we say bye. And yeah, see ya. That might be the only one we see, actually. Is it? I think it is. I love that sequence, because like, you see it for the first time, you're like, oh, I'm just going to run the elevator, and the elevator just doesn't open right away, and you're like, oh, okay. I, I, I just realized, I, I like how the other enemy is there, so in case you did decide to try to just run away, you just get cornered. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, like earlier in the game, the other turret section, uh, this, this has been completely reworked and I think is way better than... Um, so you're probably asking, what else could go wrong? Well, that. <laughs> yeah, so similar to before, we're just going to use the cannons to, to blast them. And this is the same thing from chapter... Six. Yeah, it um, Six. flies out of the ship and then, like, latches on. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. no, I'm actually just now remembering a nickname we had for these guys that was funny. Um, we called them, like, pizza or, like, lasagna. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, pepperoni pizza with the, the pustules. <laughs> All right, yeah, so we just got to make our way over to the third one here. Um, actually, this, this uh, might be a good time for uh, a couple donations. Got anything to read? I definitely do. I have $10 from Zero Marius that says, Shark Hat, 80, Shark Hat 87, good luck with the run. Greetings from Germany. I also have $50 from Jessamy that says, good morning. Good morning. And also I want to remind everyone that we are at $289,443. So we're so close to 290,000. I know we can get it there. And I'm really excited to see what this chat can do. So don't forget, we also have some really awesome incentives like the secret short showcase to Orbo's Odyssey. So thank you everyone for supporting the Prevent, the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Thank you, everybody. So uh, we can skip these rig videos here, but uh, the sequence is triggered by the, the ship actually crashing here. Um, spoilers, I guess, in a couple seconds. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, so I'll, you know, I'll just let it play. So rookie mistake, they sent trained soldiers instead of engineers this time, so. Yeah, I don't know what they were thinking on that one, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just waiting for the ship to, yeah, there it is. Uh, so that's going to be where Chapter 9 is, the Valor. We're going to head over there in uh, in just a second. This is kind of a funny little shortcut. Um, I, I think, I, I wouldn't be surprised if some casual players tried this, but yes, you can fit through the, uh, the hole there. It's the, You have to do it in kind of a specific way, um, going around the left side, but uh, then you just uh, fit through, yeah. Do you know, was that intentional? Yeah. Not intentional, but we knew about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like I was saying earlier, there's a lot of bugs that we knew about, and... You just have to evaluate them of, you know, how what's the player impact? How likely are they to reproduce it? And how likely are they to like be on that path and find it? And it plays properly, so it's eh, don't bother. Yeah. We did it. All right. Uh, so you don't have to skip that one, but I have had um, very rare issues in the past where the game has crashed here, and I'm pretty sure it's because of that. Um, Delaying like the quest updating and whatnot. So just to be safe. First instance of uh, I guess stasis necromorphs. Uh, twitchers. Like, twitchers. They're like special uh, 
they can just kind of teleport around and do really weird movements. And yeah, they have the, also more health. The stasis pack on the soldiers uh, gets corrupted by it. Mr. Ah. Clark? Hello? Um, the game did not crash, by the way. We passed the crash point, so that's great. Uh, <laughs> I didn't expect it to, but you never know. This next section, I am convinced everyone died at least once at. I feel like. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did at least once, definitely. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> I, th I think I walked in and immediately just, like, completely not thinking, not paying attention to any of the hints that was given to me probably about six times that, hey, there's explosive ordnance in here. And I just immediately shot the exploding part <laughs> on this guy. And just everything exploded. And I was like, oh. <laughs> you can't even be mad about it, man. You know? <laughs> the game director's sitting there like, hey. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're very happy if you die here. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be fair, it's, it was a really cool death. Mm -hmm. And yep. I was, I was like, kind of happy. I was like, you know, that was cool. I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right. Uh, we were talking about some insta-death lasers. That's coming up in, well, now. Uh, but fortunately, if you stasis this right as you enter, it's on a good cycle where you can just uh, sneak by there. All right, so yeah, we, we fortunately did make it all the way here without having to reload, nice. uh, and this is where the quarantine is. So, like we said, uh, we're just going to be able to run right through the room and not have to worry about fighting any enemies. Grab that stasis refill for later. We only need to fire stasis a couple more times, um, but I just I don't remember if we have a stasis pack or not, so just grabbing that to be safe. And uh, we're going to go into the... Uh, oh, I guess the engine room. I always just call this the fire room because, well... <laughs> You know, <laughs> so uh, we need to be careful because even though we are in story, uh, a lot of this fire can just kill us instantly. And we're going to reload that autosave there uh, for two reasons. One, it uh, get, puts us on a great cycle here to uh, get past all this fire without having to wait. And it gets rid of that uh, quarantine state we had, which uh, will let us save the game again and just in case we need to. There's no other quarantines we can really skip it with, unfortunately, so... Yeah, and I, I forget how it works exactly, but sometimes I think if you... There's some quarantines where it won't work or um, whatnot, and yeah, I don't know. Here's a great example of your increased run speed while you're toggle aiming. There we go. Okay, I thought nice. I messed up. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, you're not supposed to be in here. Nope. And we're going to try to do a box clip here. Oh, let's go. Oh my okay, God. let's go. All right. <laughs> Leaving him yeah. to die. You could have saved him. Uh, <laughs> that is ridiculously hard. <laughs> I'm really glad we got that one because um, you can't you can't just sit there and try it indefinitely. Um, eventually, the cutscene will finish and the door unlocks for you. Um, yeah, that was that was great. All right, that's that. I'd probably say top two hardest box clips in the game. Um, mostly just because um, you know ones like that. You're kind of pushing it with uh, it even being possible because there's not really that much distance to pull the box in the first place. Usually if you can get it to go really fast, it's a little easier. I think you mentioned it's like spherical, so it's... Yeah, like the box, like you're basically pulling the box towards you and it accelerates up to about like two-thirds of the way to Isaac and then it will start to decelerate. So you're trying to drop it right at that point where it's at max speed and then you're colliding a, Isaac's a physics object that's a cylinder with a square. You're trying to hit the exact point on it that will push him through. So it's really tough to get it in such small areas. So uh, we mentioned at the very beginning of the run that we have to pretty much do every objective in the game with some exceptions. <laughs> this is a huge exception, kind of a miracle this works, honestly. So uh, this is the shortest chapter in the game, chapter 10. Um, and there's been a few different iterations of this, actually. Uh, this is fairly new and actually a lot easier, I think, than uh, the old versions. But, um, you know, speaking of Isaac being, you know, a cylinder, we can kind of just fit through this gap here if we wiggle nice. like that. All right, so now we're, we're out of bounds. And again, we can just fly in zero G wherever we want. And pay attention to that objective. Uh, reach the executive shuttle. Say hi to the marker. And there's the marker, yep. <laughs> Ooh. Um, oh, wait, oh. I can save it. Okay, the backup. <laughs> All right. Um, this should work. I'm going to try flying up at 30 and see what happens. Oh, 
And we got nice. it. Okay, nice. All right, good backup. So that's the entire chapter. Just kidding. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and the reason uh, that's crazy is because uh, you, you start with the objective, reach the shuttle, but then when you actually go to the crew deck, which is the, the sh area the ship we're on now, um, it cancels the objective and gives you different ones, and then you have to go through all of those through this whole level. It's I, I want to say maybe the longest level casually. If not, it's pretty close. Yeah, very close to Chapter 7. Yeah. But fortunately, that objective we start with has the exact same functionality as the one you get later. Um, so we can just go straight there and activate it and skip the entire thing. It saves at least 10 to 11 minutes, I think. Wow. Yeah, it's just reactivating that objective again. And while it's active, the Singularity Core is there. So It just works. It just <laughs> works. works. And that's cool with me. All right, yeah. Not too bad. And unfortunately, we, we pretty much just go straight up uh, to land here. So when you land in that lower area like that, um, it deloads and it just drops you straight back down. Now, I, I, I could have gotten trolled a little bit. If you land in a weird spot, you can't launch there. But, um, you know. There's didn't. Mercer. A little unhappy. Um, I'd say you got time for a quick donation real quick. And there goes Mercer. Well, Awesome, and I want to tell everyone we're at two hundred and eighty-nine thousand five hundred and ninety-eight dollars. I know we're gonna make it to two hundred and ninety thousand before the end of this run because chat can do it. And I want to know, Shark Hat, are you okay with people putting shark facts in the donation uh, message? Yeah, that'd be great. Let's hear some some shark facts. Yeah, because then I know that will incentivize some people to make some awesome donations. But I do have. $50 from Pistol Pete right now that says, Happy GDQ, my favorite time of year for 10 years running. I love that. Awesome. Uh, yeah, you, uh, you got uh, time for a couple more. Okay, we have $50 from Kersmush that says, Funny comment, clever insight, delightful poem, and or intricate wordplay. That's very funny. <laughs> we also have, let's see what we got here. We also have $10 from Tote and Pole that says, late last year, I lost my best friend in the world to cancer. We never got to play the new Dead Space together. Even though we already had set aside the weekend for it, I know that he would have loved it. So seeing it on stage now is both bittersweet and nostalgic for, as Dead Space is one of my favorite franchises of all time. So thank you to the GDQ staff and the runners for doing what you do best. Go fast in some awesome games. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you so much for the donation. All right. Uh, so we are in the uh, cargo bay. Is that what this area is called? Yep. yep. Cargo? Yeah, OK. So uh, the idea here is we need to, uh, for story reasons, we need to return the marker back to uh, the planet. That the, the ship, this is a planet cracker, was you know mining the planet. We need, we need to bring it back, essentially. So uh, right now. The way this part works is we get some enemies that spawn. Uh, there's two more that spawn randomly, so they can be on either side. That's a good spawn. And is it one up here? Yep, there he is. Yeah, that's decent. That's pretty good. It can be a lot worse. They, sometimes they take their time and they don't want to come over here. <laughs> but yeah, so we are going to basically just have to make sure that uh, it, it, it's kind of an auto-scroller, but you can lose time. Uh, basically, the marker's on a set path, and you need to make sure you clear the obstacles. And if you don't do that, it'll uh, it can get stuck. There we go. So there's one. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of enemies at this point. Um, I I haven't ran impossible myself. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit here. Oh. I imagine this fight is uh, really <laughs> this <room> sucks. <laughs> really <laughs> scary. Impossible. Yeah, basically by destroying all the pustules ahead of time all of the enemy spawnings and encounters will spawn as quickly as possible. And if you start to lag behind on killing them, the room just floods. And it's some of the toughest enemies that punish you for really mess messing up, like with the uh, the swollens and the exploders. It's, it's rough. And uh, I'm spamming the, the bridge here because the enemies obviously can't walk across it while it's up. Um, that might work. Nice, okay. There's always ping. There is always ping. I'm gonna grab that real quick. Very important to the run. 
<laughs> got it. All right. Uh, now these guys need to get out of the way, please. It's like winding up that hit. <laughs> Hopefully this elevator doesn't stop. Yeah, that works. Okay. Uh, we could get memed on by the intensity director here. Lucky. We did not. Nice. It sounds like one might. Oh, wait. Oh, up. Uh, okay, we're good. All right. The the uh, delayed wall spawn. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm like, I feel like it always happens in that hallway. Yeah, like a lot of the later levels, we tried to ramp it up higher. Uh, the enemy spawns would happen. Yeah, I think I think I've gone through without enemy spawning there, but it seems like it does happen most of the time. But it's not the same spawn, so you know you can't. It's not like, oh, I know this 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 one slasher is going to be here half the time. It doesn't quite work like that. And we got to do another fight here. So this quarantine, like, if you carried over the chapter uh, chapter seven quarantine state to this, this quarantine still plays out. Actually, doesn't um, skip because I think it's like the gate comes down. Is that why? Yeah. If I remember correctly, you do still have to do this anyway for the next part to load correctly. Yeah, you could box up out of this room, but uh, the next beat wouldn't load without mm -hmm. uh, killing the enemies here. It's kind of a, a hidden quest objective. Oh, he's fast. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I think he's still alive, isn't he? Is he? They sometimes do a delayed uh, death VO. It can trick you. Oh, there you are. Okay. Oh, but no, he wasn't alive. <laughs> he, was, he was faking dead. All right, so this is one of the other hardest box clips in the game, mostly just because the, uh, the distance is really small. Um, I, th I I recently have found doing it on the right side here is a little bit easier, but it uh, still pretty. Oh well, never <laughs> nice. mind. It's easy. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Just too good. Wow. And, and the door is not supposed to be locked there. We're not supposed to have zero G, but that's because of that chapter three skip that we did, where we just went out of bounds. It this section doesn't properly, I guess, clean itself up. Yeah, and that's why um, we, when we missed it the first couple tries, I wanted to make sure. Oh, let me make sure I put that in. I wanted to make sure we we got it because you can't do um, this trick here if you don't set it up all the way back at the beginning of the game. I believe there's a volume you pass through in that elevator shaft down to the engine deck that uh, turns it off. I love the forethought that goes into routing this game. So I mean, you just mentioned how like you basically set up this skip with the other skip earlier in the game. You also, like, ha you're bringing the box around, like, the entire map. Like, uh, I feel like you don't get to see that too much. Yeah, and it, it's cool with the box routing because um, it's it's a question we can ask still. You know, is there is there a box we could take <laughs> somewhere else that we could use, you know, in a completely different spot? Because there, there are places where if we had a box, you know, it would be fast to clip. It's just not really, you know, don't really have one we can grab or, you know, it's not, not close by. Um, these guys like to block the marker path. <laughs> I do that a lot. Are they, like, scripted to go towards the marker, too? Not necessarily. Like, their pathfinding here is just trying to get to that wall to climb up uh, and see okay. Isaac. All right. It just happens to go right through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they have, like, three routes that they can take to get up. Should be one more. Did I get the last leaper? Might have got I think him. you're good. Okay. We do have to kill all the enemies here. Oh, okay, it worked. Okay, all right. Yeah, even though the objective says uh, reposition the marker, you do still have to actually kill everything for it to uh, update. See if I can get it to happen. Railing. Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> this, that, that, it's, it's, it's a weird visual thing. If you touch that railing right there, it has a little blood spatter. Hmm. All right, so we're going to uh, you know, get on the shuttle. Everything's going to be great. Kendra is not there. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, obviously you're not supposed to be able to get quite that far before the gunshot happens with normal movement speed, but, uh, you know, we're able to do that. Yeah, you, you cut corners where you can in development. All right, got a couple more rig skips we're going to do here. All right, and while we're waiting on that other rig skip, if you got uh, maybe like one or two donations real quick. Yes, I 
I have five dollars from Shark Facts that says Shark Facts number one: Sharks do not have bones. <laughs> I also have twenty-five dollars from Niddle that says Rumor has it if you say Shark Hat in the mirror three times, Isaac. Isaac clips into your room. Shark hat, shark hat, shark hat. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We are also only 80, $87 away from $290,000. So let's make it happen. I know we can do it. We also have $50 from Bobbit that says, Shark back. Sharks are incredible sprinters. They can run a mile the length of the Ishimura in approximately two hours while being attacked by zombies. <laughs> or is that only shar hat sharks? Uh, you need the hat. Bring back the marker and we can. Oh, maybe, maybe one more. You can make us whole again. All right, I gotcha. We got twenty-five dollars from Zenadir that says, "Hello, all. Shark back for you." There are over 500 species of sharks we currently know of. That's more types of sharks than we have dollars left to get us to 290k raise. Can we make that happen before the end of Dead Space? Please put this towards Orbo's Odyssey incentive. All right, thank you. So uh, yeah, we did one more box clip there. Um, that's the last one we're gonna do with those, uh, those small boxes there. And uh, basically what that does for us is it gets us down to the, uh, the shuttle a little bit quicker. Normally, uh, I believe you can't even leave the room until the shuttle docks. Mm -hmm. And we're getting here before the door even opens to, <laughs> to let it in. Uh, and fun fact, you actually cannot uh, shoot or throw Kinesis objects here. So it's, it's really nice to get that one first try because you can't throw the box back into the corner. You gotta actually walk over and set it down and then, and then try it again. Don't forget um, mine. Oh, yeah, yeah, there he is. Hey, he wanted to go to the planet. We'll just make sure he gets there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think we should probably start talking about Chapter 12 now. Uh, we are approaching the last chapter in the game, and uh, believe it or not, it is actually the hardest skip in the game, which is cool, uh, being at the very end, you know? <laughs> it's also, um, like, the second yeah. sequence break um, in the run mm -hmm. um, for a different reason. Um, Basically, from here, we don't need to really, we're not really gonna complete chapter 12. We don't need to. All we need to do now is get to the end credits. So there's really two things that we need to do to get to the end credits. We need to spawn in the final boss and then kill it and get on the ship. Um, and the trigger that spawns in the final boss, uh, excuse me, the final boss is active right away, like basically right now after this cutscene. Um, and this level kind of progressed in a really weird way. It started like, first we went through the whole level normally, which involved a lot of auto-scrollers and kind of babysitting the marker all throughout the level. Um, then I believe it was Looney who found an initial out of bounds, and then Hazeblade who developed the route around it where we got halfway through the level where we get zero G and we clip out of bounds and we just kind of fly around out of bounds similar to what you see. Um, and just go right to the, the end, basically the trigger that spawns in the final boss. Um, but it still doesn't quite solve the problem of we can just get, we can just end the chapter right away, right from the start. We don't need to go halfway through the chapter. And so one day the runner waifu was doing some just glitch finding, just kind of trying different stuff and found a way to get onto the roof. And with help from Spicy, they developed what is quite possibly the hardest trick <laughs> in the run, the dragon of Dead Space Remake. I think everyone has lost countless runs to this skip. So yeah. That's Not to make you nervous, so but best of luck. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it goes. There, there's a lot of steps to it. Some of a few of them are semi-random, but the rest is all just, you know, if we can if we can hit it or not. So, yeah, let's give it our best shot. Yeah, we, we, we need to get over to uh, the blue panel that we hit to spawn in uh, the final boss. Uh, but the thing is, we do need a box with us, too, uh, to be able to clip into the room it has. So, uh, we need to get both us and a box way over that building. So that is what we're going to try to do. <laughs> there is a very jittery camera here, so you may want to look away for a second. Yeah, it's it's a little random how long it takes us to, to boost up here, but we're going to uh, make our hitbox a little bit bigger uh, by aiming here, and there we go. So it warps us up like that. All right, so now we are going to try to stand on this box. I'm going to try to get it right about there. 
and then ideally it'll just boost us right up on top of the building Perfect. like that. Oh wait, Ooh, uh, I need to, I need to build a little there boost. All right, there we go. All right. Just, you know. Nice. <laughs> Is that too far? You're going to have to reload the box there. Ah, uh, wait, that's a little, oh. that's a little oh. too far. Okay. Well, so you get the idea. So we are just trying to launch ourselves all the way across the map. Uh, since we're standing on a slope there, um, instead of getting clipped, you know, through the wall, through the floor, it's just going to launch us all the way up into the air. Um, and it's, it's, a little, uh, it's a little finicky with the, the timing. I'd say that's probably the hardest part is the launch right there. Um, actually, uh, Nervy was showing me uh, that, that setup I used to, uh, to prop fly up on the building is, is really, really good. That part was also giving me a lot of trouble, but we worked that out in the, uh, the practice room, and that's, that's been pretty good. So yeah, we'll give this another try. So again, we just use the box to push ourselves in the corner. That was a really fast up warp. Shark Hat, guess what? We hit $290,000. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, a little <laughs> too early. That looks Let's, pretty good, maybe? Is that too far? It's pretty far. Oh, oh no, that's good. Okay, yeah, okay. Perfect. We are not uh, out of it yet. We still got to do the last part here. But okay, so now we're going to use this to prop fly up this ledge just a little. Can you actually, like with the initial jump, can you get up to this ledge here? Or? You can actually land with the box down there, okay. but it's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, it's not good. <laughs> just put it that way. All right. So I'm just trying to line this up so that we. This this ledge is very specific. Yes. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I, that's it. It it's so weird. It there's so many weird things that can happen there. But yeah. Okay. And Oops. one more box clip here. Let's go. Yes. We got it. All right. And that button is what okay. spawns in the final <laughs> boss. That one button. Yeah. Second try is great, and then the final skip of the run, Kendra skip here. Uh, big story reveal. Uh, we're not going to see it. <laughs> We are going to just... There we go. Okay. All right. See ya. Uh, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> so uh, right there, uh, one, I, I guess you could call it a funny thing that can happen is um, if you step in a very specific spot while you're aiming there because your hitbox is bigger, you just get stuck and you cannot move. And it's very sad. So that is why I did not do that. And yeah, we are pretty much uh, almost at the end of the run here. I'd say we probably got um, ideally... Uh, three-ish minutes left. Um, we're going to try to uh, two-cycle uh, this boss as well. Um, it's a little bit... Uh, it's not too bad. There's a couple things that can go wrong, but um, yeah, we'll see if we can get it. Um, oh, actually, I wanted to point out, or actually, if you want to talk about it, uh, there's a lot of uh, mo-capping with the... Uh, yeah, the with the animations here. So this one right here, you want to talk about that? Yeah, it was actually mo-capped um, with the stunt uh, person. Um, getting dragged by these two big wow. cables as they flipped over. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, especially the launch off the, um, you know, the ledge there. Oh, that is a wow. bad day. Yeah, well, it worked out because all the animations look great, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, that was brutal. Unfortunately, Kendra was not an engineer, but Isaac is, so he can handle this. Yep. Yeah. During this initial spawn here, the normal damage animation won't play, so he can get rid of all five pustules very quickly. Yeah, there's a slight delay. If you if you wait long enough, it'll eventually be damaged, and then you got to do it uh, more one at a time. All right, going to be very careful to try to not blow up these exploder sacks. I think you said this is one of the few things that wasn't tried. Yeah, <laughs> I tried a lot of ways during development to break multiple of the hive mind weak points at once, and I did not think about the exploder sacks. <laughs> All right, I'm just trying to be a little careful. You can kill these enemies a little quicker, but there we go. Okay. What kind of things did you try? Oh, every single weapon, <laughs> primary fire and alt fire. I think I brought like, fire extinguishers, uh, like. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try to destroy the top two here. 
Nice. nice. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, the way the the two cycle works is you know uh, it is for this phase specifically we're trying to destroy all five in in two shots. So I placed the other explosive over there, and we're gonna dodge four more uh, arm slaps here, and then gonna try to land that last one in one go. Yeah, each subsequent spot that's destroyed adds more acid spits, more arm swipes. Uh, so it's, you lose a lot of time. And we yes. got it. Nice. nice. Okay. Great All right. Job. We're, I'd say, about a minute or less out from the end of the run here. Uh, basically, we're going to hit one more spot on the boss, a little cutscene, and run to the final ramp. And that is going to be uh, the end there. Yeah. So time is coming so, up soon. Yeah. So I guess I'll just start uh, shout outs real quick. We're at the end here. Um, Shout outs to the whole Dead Space community, especially if you came in and uh, and, and ran this game as well. It, it, it was super fun having a new Dead Space game to glitch hunt and, and to run. And uh, and thank you to, to Motive as well uh, for making a great game. Um, it's, it's, it's been a great time playing it. And uh, no, we love making it. It was time. a lot of passion. Nice. Yeah. All right. Good job. Yes, but uh, yeah, yeah. Fantastic game. Yeah, yeah. Congrats to the whole team. Oh, um, thank you for I having me here. I was, I was really excited to come. And yeah, it was a great opportunity. Yeah, it was it was it was great having you. It was a lot of a lot of great insight on the game. Things we wouldn't it's have seriously known like otherwise. shout outs to Quinn. Like day one in the Discord, helping us just lab out stuff in the weeds, <laughs> finding all the fun stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, thank you all for being here. Um, I appreciate you commenting, uh, commentating with me. And uh, yeah, just quick shout out if you're interested at all um, in, in learning this game or any of the Dead Space games, trying out some glitches, whatever. Uh, we got a Discord. It's a small but you know cool community if you want to come check it out. And otherwise, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's been an honor to show off this game here uh, for all of you. And uh, thank you so much for the donations as well and the, and the cool shark facts. And uh, please stick around for uh, the rest of the marathon because it's going to be great. Yeah.